was uh, even more so than normal and he was afraid that a lot of the hype that we talked about a little earlier on in the programme here, that some of the hype might have got to some of the Dublin players. Of course, I can well understand his problem. In, he, as he said in the interview, he'd love to be in Joe Cameron's position coming into this semi-final because uh, Ama have been written off. Now, there's no reason Ama should have been written off. A very experienced team. They've been beaten by the eventual All-Ireland champions over the last three years by a single point over the last three years. They're physically very strong. They're experienced. Defensively very, very sound. And they have a forward line as a unit where all six are capable of scoring. Dublin haven't. So you can well under I can well understand Tommy Lyon's anxiety and I can well understand the hype because do you know what has happened the following for Dublin is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but what has happened I think what has happened is the Ole Ole Brigade, half of them have just put on Dublin jerseys. Uh, a lot of them possibly don't have a, a clue as a gas Gaelic football. Now they're more than welcome and it's great for the game. But as Colum said, these guys if things go wrong these really don't have a great allegiance to Dublin as such and they can very easily turn against the team and it can walk to the opposite effect but look I, I faced do the Dubs in many all Ireland finals and I tell you this there was no greater sight to spur you on than to see Hill 16 in full flight and in full roar and it really set, you clinch your teeth you clinch your fist and you say like, you, you silence these guys before the end and invariably we did in about 8 out of 10 matches or something like that Colm Rook, the Dubs have been on the field now for about five minutes, still no sign of Barma down there. Would you like to be out on the field that early or, or would you rather be the second team out? Or does it really matter? Well, I prefer to be out early. I think there's nothing to beat being out there for about 15 minutes. You know, you've only 15 minutes to really to warm up. The dressing rooms are great and they're mm. big now, but you can't really warm up properly. You know, Dublin have gone out and have gone through quite a strenuous uh, routine already. I'm uh, still in there. Cork here to come now, but Cork were very slow coming out against Kerry the last day and they started very slowly as well. Now you can see our man bursting out of the dressing room there like a group of fellas with intent. But we see who start the best because I would prefer to be out early and have a good warm up, get used to the surroundings, get used to the pitch. Completely different. We can't emphasize enough this pitch and how hard it is and how uh, big a difference the hop of the ball is making for teams. So personally I prefer to be out and be nice and relaxed by the time the game would start. One of the things, the things about um, uh, as you've heard came out to a uh, um, great cheer from their supporters. One of the things about Dublin coming out was they caught their supporters a little bit by surprise, Pat Spillane, because the miners were actually still on the field when they came out. They did. Uh, I would agree with it. Yes, they came out quite early, but I would agree. I actually walked for my first time today, this morning, walking that pitch. And it is a very, very unusual pitch. It's very, very hard as Gaelic pitches go. The it ball really bounces on it and they water the pitch in the morning which makes it quite slippery so it's very difficult to try to figure out whether you should wear moulded studs whether you should wear long cogs or whatever like that so the longer you can be out in the pitch get the feel of the ball get the feel of the pitch the better but like i said this this crowd have been here for several years uh, they're well experienced they're around a long time and okay at the back of their mind it's 77 since they won their last championship match and this is one of the things that when they I mean, you talk about the hype with the dubs, but you also have a mental block, a mental problem, a psychological thing with Armagh, because there is this so-called Crow Park hoodoo. Now, they will cast aside and they say, no, it, it, it means nothing to us. But when the pressure comes on, it's doubts like that that come in the mind. And certainly, that was very, very evident in the drawn game against Sligo. Suddenly, you know, they got, in, they got a lead, it looked like winning, and they went into the defensive. And this is the thing about, if Armagh to have a chance today, they will have to adopt positive attacking tactics take the game to dubs not defend not bring the bodies back behind the ball take the game to dubs and they have a chance and certainly i mean they'll have to finish strong in the two two matches against Sligo, the drawn match they scored nothing in the final 20 minutes in the replay they scored two points in the last 20 minutes if this that'll be footballing suicide against the dubs today all right gentlemen well uh, with uh, just a few minutes to go to the throwaway now let me give you a reminder about the man of the match phone numbers if you want to pick the man of the match from today's All-Ireland Football Semi-Final. Those are the numbers on screen, 1550 717114, or if you're ringing to the north, it's 0906 614 2048. And those phone lines will be open all afternoon, all evening, until 8 o'clock tonight in actual flight. That's for the man of the match from Dublin versus Armagh. So then, uh, six minutes to the throw-in. Final predictions, gentlemen, can Dublin do it, Tom Rowe? Well, uh, I fancy Dublin. I don't think Dublin are a great team. We get plenty of sticks from the Dublin supporters. But I think Armagh are summed up by Dear McMartin. He starts off in every game at 100 miles an hour. You think he was going to destroy everyone. By the time the game is over, the confidence seems to have drained out through his boots and he's gone. If Marston plays well, I think Armagh have a great chance. 
was Dublin for me, even though I still don't think Dublin are very good. <laughs> that's what I'm But I look at one criteria for determining success, and, and Kerry showed it last week, and that's pace. Dublin have the pace. In order to capitalise on that, they're going to have to win the battle on the middle third of the field, but they're going to have to open up the play, move the ball fast, and really capitalise on the lack of pace, particularly in that um, uh, full-back line. So it's Dubs for me as well. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Two votes for the Dubs then from the panel here. The opposing captains taking the photograph of Michael Collins, the referee. And that's also our cue to hand over to our commentary team for this big game, Martin Carney and first, Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and uh, welcome here to this second of the All-Ireland Football Semi-Finals. Michael Collins from Clonakilty Match Referee indicating the rules and regulations. He almost lost the coin in the process, and uh, it looks like Kieran McGeaney is going to get the first choice. Coleman Goggins won the toss, playing from left to right as we look at it, and thus will probably play with a slight wind advantage. Nowhere in the world will you get a bigger crowd than here in Dublin for an Ireland football semi-final. For the first time in seven years, Dublin are just 70 minutes away from a place in the All-Ireland Senior Football Final. Dublin manager Tommy Lyons makes one change to his starting 15 that finally saw off the challenge of Donegal after more than 140 minutes of action. Goalkeeper Stephen Cluxton has now got a well-established defence in front of him with the Blues captain Coleman Goggins back in the corner and Pader Andrews outside him at left half back. For the second time in a row, Darren McGee is selected as Kieran Whelan's centre field partner, thus confirming their good performance the last day. It's the attack that's slightly redesigned, with Shane Ryan returning to the centre forward position, having lost his place for the quarter final replay. Desi Farrell has been past fit to play despite a shoulder problem and will wear number 15. Desi did a late uh, fitness test uh, yesterday and that shoulder injury was passed A-OK by Dr. Pat Duggan and so he will start at left corner forward. The Ulster champions return to Croke Park determined to change their fortune when it comes to the semi-final stages of the All-Ireland Championships. Losing to Meath and Kerry in 99 and 2000 respectively has given the Armagh boys the knowledge and experience of what's required for victory. Three of the Armagh defence play their club football here in Dublin. Andrew McNulty, Andrew McCann with Bally Bowden St. Enders and Kieran McGinney with the Fina and thus have possibly a greater insight to the Dublin attack than any other country. John Cole and Paul McGrain has been and remained manager Joe Kernan's first choice midfield pairing. From the team that ended Sligo's Odyssey and Navin, there's just one change in personnel. Paddy McKeever is selected and will start at right half forward instead of Barry O'Hagan. This is what young boys and indeed girls dream now of parading behind the Artane boys band in front of what is now the capacity of Crow Park, almost 18,000 people. It's seven years since an Ulster County won an All-Ireland football semi-final. Derry and Armagh have tried and failed twice. Cavan once, Tyrone once. Can Coburn Goggins maintain that consistency and ensure that an Ulster County will not participate in this season's All-Ireland football final? Temperatures here in the low 20s, it's very warm, it's a real cauldron of atmosphere and passion and I'm sure these Armagh and Dublin footballers will produce what everybody is hoping to be a thrilling game of football. Any last minute thoughts, Martin Carney? No, just looking forward to an excellent game and if the game actually reflects the atmosphere we have here, Marty, we're in for quite a match. Manic atmosphere, great colour all around the ground. Two teams looking very, very fit when they came out, very composed as well, it must be said. On the one hand, a very experienced Armagh team against, the, you know, for the most part, an inexperienced Dublin team. A lot of new lads, under 21 lads, on the, under on the Dublin team, like Barry Cahill, Paul Casey, Johnny McNally at left half forward. And I mean, in this game here, it's going to be a major test of their character because there's going to be a, a physical dimension to this game maybe that they haven't had in the last couple of weeks and quite honestly Marty one more point I'd like to make the absence of a place kicker actually a reliable place kicker in the Dublin team could be a major factor by the end of the game
Well, it's interesting as well that Joe Kernan probably had a long-term vision. On the 2nd of May, he brought his team to Costa Blanca, the La Manga training camp in Spain, hoping indeed to give a new dimension to this Armada side. And I know that today they're watching this match all around the world, including Flamingo's Bar in Santa Ponza. If it's as hot there as it is here, then you can have an idea what it's like in Pro Park on All Ireland's semi-final day. This is Dublin, not the World Cup in Japan. This is Gaelic football. At one of its most premium times of the year, All-Ireland semi-final, 21 days before we know, or at least not 21 days before we know, but an hour before we know, but 21 days before the All-Ireland football final between Kerry or Dublin or Armagh. Kieran McGinney hoping to lead his side into that All-Ireland final, fully focused. Interesting, Martin, that they came here to Dublin last night. Joe Kernan decided that he wasn't going to have any messing around in terms of travelling to Croke Park with travel congestion. Yes, I believe there's a lot of problems on the bridge of Slane and from routes coming from the north. So Joe Kernan did a sensible thing in bringing his team here last night, getting them relaxed, getting them, set them focused for today's game. But we just saw Kieran McGinney a moment ago. He's been the inspiration, he's been the driving force, he's been the command performer on the on the Armagh team for the last number of years and his duel today with Shane Ryan could be a defining duel as to how the game goes. Hill 16 packed to capacity as the teams continue their parade down in front of us no teams breaking away Dublin supporters displaying their colours as the Ten Boys band comes to a halt here in front of us the teams go into their positions. Dublin, in case you've just joined us, won the toss and decided to play from left to right. And now we pause here in Croke Park for our Raw Nubian. that uh, is involved with Bally Bowden and it could be an interesting 
piece of information in terms of inside knowledge, the way the Dublin forwards operate. The first three seems to favour Armagh, and going to take it is Paul McGray. Yes, and Enda McNulty has switched corners actually to go over and mark Alan Brogan, and Dara Marsden is playing full forward, being marked by Paddy Christie. Okay. Ashin McConville chasing after this one. It's a hopeless case. Sideline ball for Paul Casey. Jesse Farr. Nice chest high ball for Alan Brogan. Some jersey pulling. Free to Dublin. And the referee, precise and accurate. The free not taken from the correct position. He's going to give a throw ball now. Yeah, that's a correct decision, but again, I hate to see a referee getting too fussy too early in a game like this. As we watch the uh, throw in, Desi Farrell is playing centre forward, and John McNally seems to be switching in towards the full forward line as well. But uh, at the moment, as always with Dublin, positions mean very little. Desi Farrell fouling this time. Three to Armagh. Making a good run. Dermot Marsden got away from Barry Cowell rather easily now has to face Cowell fends himself and sends this off the post and latching onto it is the captain Coleman Goggins good ball out far is Darren McGee support is from the right half back Paul Casey flicking it in towards the corner Ray Cosgrove Good play by Dublin. Are they going to score first in this semi-final? Seven Connell. Very good interplay here by Dublin. Ray Cosgrove was involved. Just a flick back to his right half forward. And Senan Connell, who's been scoring rather well recently, opens up this semi-final. A wonderful move in that time by Senan Connell to get into his scoring position. An interesting point also, Desi Farrell has gone out the centre half forward to mark his club mate, Kieran McGeaney. Kieran Wheeler going through the centre was Darren McGee. Just went through the hands of Justin McNulty. Back there is his younger brother, Ender McNulty. Paul McGray. Making himself available is Paddy McKeever. Being chased by Tyler Andrews. Being fouled by the left half back. Another free to Armagh. Joe Kernan with his fellow selectors. Paul Grimley and John McCluskey. Ball inside for Oshin McConville. Ronan Clark was calling for it. Playing it along the touchline. That area was well guarded. And really it needed a crossfield ball more than anything else. This is Barry Carr. Heather Andrews. Looking around for options. Going back together is Justin McNulty. Under pressure from Alan Brogan. Here in McGinney switches the direction of the play. But is it going to carry too much pace? It is. Sideline ball Dublin. Barry Carl takes it very quickly. In pairs Alan Brogan. Chance here for Dublin. And it's gone out for a 45. Here in McGinney seemed to get a touch to it. So it's the first 45 of the afternoon. That's a very interesting decision, Martin, to put Desi Farrell on Kieran McGinney because they're the best of mates, uh, obviously, because Farrell was involved in getting McGinney to transfer to Nathena. That's right, and by playing him on McGinney, he might be in some way intimidate McGinney, might make, make Kieran McGinney feel under a little bit of a threat. And as well as that, Desi is the most experienced and has that little bit of guy to exploit whatever weakness he knows that McGinney might have. Here's a man who's done it before from a 45. Paddy Christie. This one is floating to the left and wide. Scored a 45 against Donegal. He's actually got two points on the scoreboard, the fullback. He scored the other one from play in the match against Kildare. Seamus Mallon 
one of the members of the audience. Breaking ball. Darren McGee leaving it for his older brother Johnny. Alan Brogan punching it forward. Greg Cosgrove. Three arm out there, but he survives the challenge. Chance for a point well taken. Some of his critics will say he's not, uh, he doesn't like the physical stuff. He survived the physical stuff there and did very well here. Look at this. Survived three challenges, had the confidence to send it over the bar. Good play. Certainly bottled plenty of strength that time, plenty of bravery, and a very good finish by a player who's really on top of his game this last couple of months. Shane Ryan picks up the loose ball, transfers it over to this side. A little push in the back, spotted by Michael Collins, the referee. Three to Dublin. Ray Cosgrove to take it. Scorer of six goals in the last four games. A total tally of six goals and 17 points. It really is a remarkable performance. This one is going to the left. Plenty of Armagh defenders. Kieran McGinney underneath it. And survived a hefty challenge as well from John McNally. And the referee is going to have a word with McNally for that challenge on Kieran McGinney. And the yellow card is going to be shown for the first time. It looked like there was a clenched fist on the challenge on McGinney. First yellow card of this semi-final. Yeah, a little bit of an experience in John McNally's part. Went in with a clench fist, definitely on McGinney. Good feeling by McGinney, but in there, that's certainly not playing the ball and probably deserves to be booked. To be fair, I don't think there's a clenched fist when I see the weight there. I think he's just pulling and dragging. Well, yeah, that's fair comment, Matty. Darren McGee. Look at the support from Jesse Farrell. But McGee sends it over the bar. Point against Donegal in the drawn match. Got his first start for the replay, maintained his position, and this is how he rewarded Tommy Lyons. With a beautiful point, cutting through the centre. Jesse Farr was running so fast off the ball and off camera, but McGee, there's confidence. Good score. A very assured start by Dublin, Marty, it must be said. They're taking the game to our man. They've started it with three good scores in the scoreboard. Johnny McGee brings Senn and Connell into the action. Right half back is Paul Casey. Good ball into the space. Running onto it is John McNally. Available outside is Shane Ryan. Knocked away cleverly by Andrew McCann and picked up by his colleague in the half back line, Aidan O'Rourke. It's back to McCann. Dublin harassing and pressurising. Wonderful play by Dublin. Forcing Armagh into the air. They maintain possession. Sen and Connell this time off to the long ball. But it was the wrong choice. So far, Martin, the quality of the ball that's going to Dublin is impressive, which is very much into the space. It's not the big, long, high ball. Yeah, that's the thing, Martin, that has been a characteristic of Dublin's performances all year, is that they're hitting the, not the, the space and not the face as such, into the area where the player is going into. And the other characteristic that has been a notable feature of their, of their game this year has been the pressure game yeah. that they're putting on, the, on their opposition whenever the opposition have the ball. All over the country, clubs are being told, and intercounty players being told to make sure when a defender has the ball to put him under pressure. But very few do it. Well, it's the hard part and the piece that a lot of <laughs> fans don't notice. Lovely catch by Paul McGray. Here, McGinney again available to give the final distribution. This one, it's knocked away. Andrew McCann has to come back together. Looking for it is John Toe. Survives the challenge from Darren McGee. He gets the lucky break from Desi Farrell's breakdown and uh, Toll is fouled after he kicked the ball or indeed as he kicked the ball. So from where the ball landed, this is going to be a free for our mark. Ten minutes played, still no score for our mark. 
This is the first real opportunity for a man this game. Paddy McKeever. The white flag has been raised by the umpire. Armagh are on their way. This man hasn't scored since the Ulster semi-final against Fermanagh. That was the 9th of June in Clonus. Seven points in five games. This will give him confidence, the fact that he was dropped for the replay against Sligo. Right down the middle, the kick out from Stephen Cluxton. Paul Casey comes from right half back. Just wouldn't come up first time. But John McNally, Armagh come away with it. Ender McNulty changes direction again. John Toll thought about the short ball, uses Dean McMarsden instead. Then comes the ball into the full forward line, and Stephen McDonald chasing him as Coleman Goggins. Gone through the centre is Roman Clark. That pathway is blocked. Now comes the distant pass, the overlap. The pass is not good to Ocean McHumberly pulls at it! And it's gone out for the 45. It was the first real movement from Armagh. Great running off the ball. And we were critical of them in other games, Marky. But this is more of what we expect from Armagh. Yeah, great bit of interchange between Gilbert Morris and Oshie McConville and Stephen McDonald. That's him a very, very good pass from Oshie. And maybe a little bit lucky to get the 45 out yeah, of it, to be honest about it. Yeah. But certainly Stephen McDonald is the one player that is on song this year with Armagh and they will be trying to channel as much ball into him as possible. He has been marked at the moment, I think, by Barry Cahill. Score of 31 points in six games. Oshin McCondor. Drops this one in. Is there a touch of Cluxton? Reacts brilliantly. And the young goalkeeper comes out with the ball. He really knew very little about it, but we have to credit the keeper. It was a wonderful reaction save. Wonderful reaction save, sun in his eyes, but what a save. Paddy McKeever keeps the pressure on Dublin. German Marsden needs the support of John McEntee. It's high, but it's to the left and wide. But that 45 by Ushin McConville just got a touch and Tuxton just saw it, reacted brilliantly, gathered it into his chest and came out. Fantastic goalkeeping instincts that time by Stephen Tuxton, even the better I think by Paddy Christie. Lots of breaking ball around centre field, John McEntee. Not a good delivery into his forwards. Gilbert Marsden works hard. Dublin opened up here. Oshin McConville right into the middle of Hill 16. And Oshin will be disappointed. Really there was an option there because Gilbert Marsden was gone inside. And a little bit of anxiety. This is most unusual. We have several 2,000 Armagh supporters, I believe, in the middle of Hill 16. Wonderful to see. Great sporting spectacle. John McEntee looking again for Stephen McDonald. Shooting. The ball is going straight over the bar. A fabulous point by Stephen McDonald. Second in terms of top scorers for Armagh with two goals and 14 points in six games. But this is a peach. From the reverse angle, camera, look at this, dropping over the crossbar, right out of the sideline. Yes, and he's going to give Coleman Goggins his parking on quite a handful at the moment. What is noticeable, Armagh beginning to pick up breaks, Marty. Shane Ryan, playing at left half forward for Dublin, despite wearing number 11. Hannah Andrews takes the right option, sends it across field. Misjudged by Alan Brogan, picked up by Ender McNulty. Armagh are searching, as you said, Mark, Oshin McConville. Surviving the challenge from Young Brogan. Looking for the ball into space, but there was nobody really running. Coming across is Johnny McGee. 
brings Paul Casey into the play and then that final pass goes astray and are now put the pressure again on Johnny McGee and his colleagues Oshin McConville Ronan Clark getting his first touch in this semi-final Dermot Marsden is an option this is Marsden gets by Barry Cowell and this is going to the left and wide that's a bad miss bad miss, that miss and the miss a couple of minutes earlier by Oshin McConville who come back to haunt him what is known as little Marty is that Keir McGeeney has driven forward on two or three occasions something we didn't see him doing really against Sligo in the last game and Taoiseach Bertie O'Hearn along with the president of the GA Sean McCaig with his wife as Johnny McGee has picked up an injury of course he uh, strained a medial ligament against me over two months ago and uh, because he played on it seemed to do excessive damage but uh, since returning has certainly done very very well at centre half back yes and a very imposing centre half back he is indeed Marty shows up the middle very very well very difficult to get past actually Nice play again from Amar. John McIntyre hits it powerfully and hits it wide. That's a second bad miss from the centre half forward. Heard, in fact, I think, from the uh, Cosmic Glen Club. And yes. he's, he's kind of shooting wildly, isn't he, Mark? Yes, and they're after again panicking a little bit there. The kick out from Stephen Cluxon did not go over the 20 metre line, so it will be throw up in front of the goals at the 20 metre line. Correct decision by the referee. Again, technically correct. It's a technical uh, foul, and the referee has done the, the right thing. Here on wheel at number eight, Paul McGrain, number nine. McGrain down to John McIntyre. Will he try again? Up for a colleague. Ronan Sharp. Fouled by Coleman Goggins. Dublin supporter certainly incensed with the decision by the courtman. Three going to be taken by Ushin McConville. This to level the match for the first time. 21 of his 31 points scored from threes. Armagh and Dublin are level. After almost 18 minutes of play. Yes, and at the moment, certainly, Armagh begins to dominate the centre of the field area. That midfield diamond of McIntyre, Toll, McGrain and McGeeney are starting to turn the screw a little bit. And they're winning all the breaking balls at the moment. Some substitutes warming up. That's uh, Barry Duffy and Jared Reid. Jared Reid is a defender, Barry Duffy a forward. Brogan getting away from Kieran McGinney and into McNulty left half back for Dublin is Father Andrews this time it's a free for Dublin Andrew McCann fouling yeah and again I think a harsh enough decision Alan Brogan was running out of options that time and McCann okay put a hand across him but again, it gives Ray Cosgrove a chance to re-establish their lead. That's his angle. As Ray Cosgrove steadies himself. As we look from our camera angle behind the goals, and it's sailing over the crossbar. Second point of the day for the full forward. Benny Tierney playing in his 102nd championship match, 22nd championship match this afternoon. Breaking ball, picked up by Darren McGee, going for his second point, but this one tailing to the left. Third wide of the day so far for Dublin. Maybe it's 
time smart here on the middle of the park there's an absence of composure on the part of the Dublin team the runs were even made that time by the full forward line perhaps it would have been more advantageous just to drop the ball in short in front of them good kick out by Benny Tierney Paul McGrain made the run from a central midfield position out to the left right flank as we look at it once again Armagh pick up the loose breaking ball Ronan Clark Paddy Christie but it's Clark that gets the pass from John McIntyre good run by Clark and he sends it over the bar Ronan Clark seemed to get injured as he kicked that over the bar for his first point of this semi-final he was the hero in the replay against Sligo with a goal and two points this is his first point in the All-Ireland semi-final and a very good score yes again interesting enough today they're playing him in in the full forward line I think he's a much bigger threat to our man when he's in there rather than out in the wing position which he seemed to play him in the first Sligo match four of the Armagh forwards have now scored only two absentees John McEntee and Dermot Morrison Darren McGee down injured in the centre of the pitch as the sideline ball is taken quickly that injury to McGee not spotted yet John McEntee changing the distribution tactic this time sending it in low to Marsden under pressure from Kyle and Johnny McGee and it's Barry Kyle that comes away with it referee I think has blown his whistle and in quick to assert his authority and John McEntee having a word with Michael Collins and I think he's noting McEntee's name in the book he didn't show him a yellow card but he just noted his number and that was for some dissent Darren McGee needs some attention seems to be an eye problem and the physio there is James Allen son of uh, Norman Allen a Dublin star of the 50s and with it. and Darren is okay to continue on back into position this is the incident again as Darren McGee seen you can see there he's clutching his face just seemed to be an accidental knock easily cut out sent back in by John Toe Stephen McDonald with Coleman Goggins goal side onto the left boot difficult enough angle it's floating to the left and wide the umpire has indicated quite clearly that it is over the end line kick out for Stephen Cluxton yeah, so far the game Marty has been a bit of a disappointment there's not the ebb and flow to it that we expected both teams are probing away at one another maybe there's uh, you know th th there's too much tension there a little bit of nerves still that haven't been got rid of but no neither team seems to be able to impose themselves decisively on the other as yet a lot of scrappy play at centre field while they're breaking the ball there isn't a, a decisive plan to pick up the loose ball Sennon Connor feeding Ray Cosgrove coming into challenge now into McNulty gone inside is Darren McGee back to Cosgrove lovely touch back to McNally Cosgrove and he takes the point his third point of this All-Ireland semi-final his second from play what a beautiful sequence of play and understanding and interplay Darren McGee, Cosgrove and McNally all of them, look at that for a flick on McNally had to go back to Cosgrove and he wisely took the right option sending it over the bar yeah Cosgrove was involved two or three occasions in that move great presence of mind to flick the ball on and take the return and again the composure to put the ball over the bar that guy is really on fire and when you consider he's been out of the game for a couple of years he has made a triumphant return Kieran McGinney picked up an injury in that uh, sequence of play seems to have a wood problem and the Armagh medical team coming on to check that their centre back is ok as we look at Tommy Lyons who is uh, running down to have a quick word with Sen and Connell and perhaps a positional switch Joe Kernan will certainly be concerned about his centre half back because he's crucial 
to our Miles Caden Clark. So Kieran McGinney seems to be okay. And we'll resume with a kick out from Benny Tierney. Yes, you told me made earlier, Marty, both Desi and Kieran McGinney are cancelling each other out of the game. Neither of them has been in it or, you know, giving the display we'd have expected from them. McGinney this time. Good call by Ronan Clark. He indicated that he wanted over towards the Cusick stand side, but Paddy Christie was quick and alert to see what was going on. Pato Andrews makes himself available. Not a great ball for Desi Farrell. And that's going to be a line ball to Armagh. Aidan O'Rourke from Drummond T is going across to take it. The only defender from the Armagh camp to actually score in this championship with one point. The referee does not blow his whistle. Dermot Morrison and Armagh were looking for a free. On this side, Darren McGee just taking his eye off it. Nice pickup that almost came off for Ray Cosgrove. It looked as if it was going to work. And McGee now has a chance to make amends. Ball given away. Fancy Bellion. Running on is Jonathan McGee. Better known as Johnny McGee. In towards the corner. John McNally. Looking for options. Decides to take on Justin McNulty. This is a great run by McNally. And McNally sends it across the face of the goal and wide. Four wides for Dublin in this match so far. In contrast, Armagh have five. It's a game that promised a lot, Martin, but it has failed to deliver so far. Well, so far, as we said earlier, Marty, there's been a bit of a disappointment. Neither team is actually exerting the control that we might have expected. And again, the quality of the... The marking is so tight on either side that it's difficult for either of, their of the two forward lines to go and make a decisive breakout. Kieran McGinney seemed to lose it in the sun. Paul McGrain fouled Jesse Farrell in his race for possession. Ray Cosgrove again. When the ball is left into him, he is causing problems for Armagh. There is a fear up north that they have, a, well, not a very strong full back line. And certainly Ray Cosgrove seems to have the better every time the ball comes in in the proper way. Yeah, he's giving an object lesson and actually breaking off his man, showing for the ball and winning possession. Three points for Ray Cosgrove so far. Going for his fourth. To put Dublin two points in front. That's what it looks like from the canal end. And 16 happy so far. Their hero in the championship to date, producing a rather consistent performance at full forward. Dublin lead by two points. Good play by Kieran McGinney, laying it off to Paul McGrain, who brings Ronan Clark into the game. Well read. Good reading by Barry Cowell with the breaking ball. Favours Oshin McConville. And that is gone to the right and wide. It's just the third or fourth occasion when an Armagh forward has had the opportunity and the time to actually put the ball over the bar. They'd be a little bit disappointed actually with their accuracy. For an experienced team, they seem to be that little bit over anxious. Yes, in fact, it could, be, it could be true to say both teams are more perspiration than inspiration. Nice one, Martin. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> John Toll laying it off, and it's robbed beautifully. And away come Dublin. Chance here. And that is gone to left and wide. The referee, in fact, has blown his whistle and giving a free to Dublin. Here in Whelan will be disappointed the advantage wasn't played, but uh, 
to be some compensation in the fact that it is a free for the Blues. Johnny McGee going to take it. Easily won again by Ray Cosgo. This time onto the left boot. But it's going to go, I would imagine, yes it is, left and wide. Half an hour played. Dublin still lead by two points. With this man scoring four out of those six points. Tommy Lyons, reasonably happy but anxious to make perhaps a few changes and having a word from the sideline Paul Casey comes from the right half back position Francie Bellew underneath it and on this occasion it was fouled free quickly taken John Toll Paddy McKeever with Hatter Andrews Still there for the taking. Desi Farr. He rides just a little bit too late. But Dublin have possession. Coleman Goggins being fouled. Free to Dublin. Here in Wheeler. John McNally came this side but uses Shane Ryan instead. Alan Brogan is outside it. Shane Ryan correctly penalised for taking too many steps. Great Armagh. Ronan Clark. Look where the full forward is. Right here in front of us in the centre of the field. Open stand side. Here in McGinney. That's a good ball. Stephen McDonald loses it. And Dublin regain possession. Paddy Christie. Jesse Farr. Here in McGinney is supposed to be marking him. Again, good ball inside for Ray Cosgrove. Francie Bellew is marking the full forward now. Cosgrove stepping aside with one, two challenges. But it easily intercepted. And Armagh come away once more. Interesting tactical switch by Joe Kernan and Armagh to put Francie Bellew now on Ray Cosgrove. As we watch, run and drop. Armagh playing essentially with one man full forward. Stephen McDonald battling with Coleman Dobbins and the defender did very well but the referee claims that he picked the ball off the ground there you can see the hand signals clearly indicating to the players the reason why he's given the free to Armagh yes it was all a little bit frantic there all right Marty but I do think Coleman Goggins did pick the ball off the ground you just see it in this situation a good tussle with himself and Stephen McDonald but definitely Kieran Mack um, or Coleman Goggins picks it off the ground a little bit of afters then with John McIntyre Roman Goggins still down injured. Let's just look at this from another camera angle. Ball on the ground. It would look, yes, that Coleman Goggins picked the ball off the ground. And the challenge by John McEntee on Coleman Goggins seemed to catch him on the face. As Oshin McConville stands over the ball. And off camera, Coleman Goggins is going off for some quick medical attention. Stephen Cluxton organizes his defense. Oshin McConville. Just one point so far in this first half. Hits it. Straightly over the bar. Two points for McConville, both from Freeze. And Armagh still trailing by just one point. And that's Armagh's first point in 15 minutes. Yes, that's correct, Marty, but you must credit both teams with effort, even though they're finding it very difficult to establish any great rhythm, and the quality of the passing at times, I must say, is less than what we expected from a game of this importance. Fine catch. Darren McGee. Great ball into space. Ray Cosgrove comes out to gather. Not a good ball for Alan Brogan. And the Tigerish Ender McNulty got there first. Another free for Armagh. 
Yes, that's indeed. Paul McGrain was fouled. Yes, indeed. And Enda McNulty will be very happy with his display so far in Alan Brogan. As you say, Marty Tigerish gets it tight, but it's actually matching Alan Brogan in the sprints for the ball. Coming back on is Coleman Goggins. After that uh, blood injury, two minutes extra time to be played here in this first half. Johnny McGee under pressure from John McEntee. It's going to be a free to Dublin. Dublin certainly will fancy playing into the Hill 16 end in the second half. It's where Ray Cosgrove has done quite a lot of his goal scoring. And Armagh, once again, the attack broken down. Paul Casey. Ender McNulty. Here in McGinney, as always, showing for it. Getting more involved. This time, lobs it in high. Broken down for Roman Clark. Paddy Christie for once makes a mistake. And remember that ball was dropping in and Paddy had to face the sunshine and possibly was blinded by the sunshine. Yes, we saw that in the minor match with the Longford goalkeeper had the sun affected him on a couple of occasions, but that was a very dangerous ball into a one-on-one -on -one situation from Kieran McGinney. So Oshin McConville will go for his third point. And he puts it over the bar. Armagh and Dublin are level for the third time. Three frees, three points for Ushin McConville. And the referee, Michael Collins, blows the half-time whistle. An interesting first half, but certainly a team, two teams level, but three times in this match. But level, most importantly, at halftime, Tommy Lyons and Joe Kernan will have a lot to talk about, I'm sure, and try and inspire their team to greater endeavours for the remaining 35 minutes. Not quite the uh, level of football that we expected in this semi-final. A little bit disappointing, but still intriguing, to say the least. Yes, indeed, Marty. It has been an intriguing half, and actually both defences have got the measure of the respective attacks. And I would say at halftime, both Joe Kernan and Tommy Lyons will be very anxious to reorganise their attack and recite players in different positions and maybe we'll see Desi Farrell in the full forward line so half time here at Cook Park it's Armagh 6 points Dublin 6 points all level let's go down to the sideline and join Tara Maloney oh Brindley of Armagh what's your view at half time well first 10, ten minutes or so totally belong to Dublin uh, we, we lost a lot of break and ball right in the middle of the field conceded, conceded a lot of easy frees but we've got the grips with it, you know, and we've we'll got back in the game slowly. Like. Thank you very much. Jason Sherlock of Dublin. What's the Dublin view at the break? Yeah, as Paul said, uh, we started well, but full credit to Armagh, just came back into the game. We haven't played well, but it, it was always going to be a test for a medal, whether we can play at this level, and we're still in the game. We're happy to be there, and hopefully things will turn in the second half. Thanks, Jason. Cheers. And thank you very much, uh, Dara Maloney. And, and, uh, I wonder what Colm O'Rourke and Pat Spillane thought of that first half. It's all level here in Crow Park. Do stay with us and join us for a post-match or half-time analysis after this commercial break. Yes, 12-man Dublin beating Galway in the 1983 final. My father, God rest him, swore he'd never go and see Galway play again after that. Well, he did, and there were better times a little bit later on, but a bad day for Galway football, a good day for the Dubs. Now, the man of the match uh, from this match will be chosen by you, and those are the numbers to ring, 50, 50, 7, 1, 7, 1, 1, 4, at 74 cents per minute, or 0906 614 2048 from Northern Ireland at 60 pence per minute, and those uh, lines will be open until 8 o'clock this evening. Now, just a reminder about our email address, Sunday Game at rte.ie, if you want to get through to us and make any comments about today's game or any other matters related to GEA. And also, there's our website on screen for you there as well. You can visit our website, obviously, at any time. 
Now let's take a look at the statistics then from the first half of Dublin and Armagh in this All-Ireland Football semi-final. And, uh, well, couldn't be closer, could it? And uh, Tommy Lyons was saying in the interview before uh, the match that we showed you that he reckoned this could go down to the last minute of the game even. And, uh, well, that's certainly looking on at the moment. The rest of the stats there as well, just one yellow card uh, issued in the course of that match against Dublin forward John McNally. Now, Colin Moore and Pat have been watching that with me. It's Martin Carney says more perspiration than inspiration, and I think that's as good as an assessment of it as you could get. Yes, if your father was around now, Michael, he'd definitely say he'd go back and see Galway, because that was a very, very bad 35 minutes of football. Dublin particularly were poor at kick passing, and uh, their forwards have been tied up completely, apart from Ray Cosgrove, who was the beaten of Francie Bellew. Uh, Armagh have missed easier chances and probably should be in front at this stage. Their forwards seem a bit mm. more threatening than Dublin, but as a game, it's very flat stop start and nobody seems to be taking in charge of it no real individual standing out yeah. in the game apart possibly from Cosgrove no it's true uh, but, but at the same time Dublin started brightly enough Pat Spillan uh, Senator Collins' point was exactly the kind of thing to I suppose lift the crowd and give a big cheer and all that kind of thing it was because it, it, they open well and you know they have the beating of the Armagh full, fo full, full back line because the Dublin full forward line have the pace and the movement was quite good at the early stages but uh, as we see here this was a good move out uh, this is one, this was the difference between, I mean, this was Dublin's good point in the first half, in the first couple of minutes. Their movement was good. They were finding a man, which they didn't find after the first two minutes. Casey goes through, and watch, head is up, looking for a forward colleague, and you have a nice ball into Sin and Conan, and a point. After that, we saw very little. We saw very little of this type of play. I mean, what... Armagh winning the middle third. I mean, it's all right if the Dublin full forward line have the beating of the Armagh full back line, but it's dependent on two things. It's dependent basically on winning the midfield battle, winning the possession, and getting the ball, a good supply of ball in. They're not getting a good supply of ball, and that's credit to Armagh who are winning that middle third, who are physically closing down. And in fairness, credit the best of the moves from our, uh, have come from Armagh. Their movement into the two man full forward line, the ball has been in. You know, I'm reminded of a comment by a German commentator during the World Cup. He said, if you found that breathtaking, you're suffering from acute bronchitis. And certainly, that was far from bre breathtaking. It was nursery rhyme stuff. It was huffing and puffing and very, very poor. And I, in mass contrast to last weekend's opening first half against with Kerry and Cork. That best that best that point of the first half from our Armagh point of view, Colin O'Rourke, was Owen Clark's point, I thought. Yeah, so that point of Dublin is exemplified too. If you were a coach, you say, uh, always be back. If you were back, you're back in front of your man if the yeah. ball hits the post. And Goggins did that. The minor games, we saw problems on that score. But here we have our Armagh attacking again. And when they attacked, they were attacking a bit sharper than Dublin. And there's a few of their men with a bit to spare over their men. Now, I thought Paddy Christie would bottle up... Uh, a uh, young Clark there, you know, he's only out of minor from last year, but he has the confidence to go with Paddy Christie, he's dragging him out the field, any of the full forwards for the last while have kept Christie close to goal, and he has dominated every full forward, so the Armand tactics are very good there, they're dragging him all over the pitch, and leaving McDonald inside, and McDonald is after letting the ball fall out of his hands mm. a couple of times when he could have been in for a goal. The other thing that Dublin did was to put Desi Farrell and Kieran McGinney. Now, uh, club mates and they wanted to balance each other out of work for a while, but McGinney is now beginning to get forward. I'd say he's trying to exploit Desi's lack of pace by going forward. So I'd say you'll see him coming closer up to this goal in the second half. Ray Cosgrove was bright in the first half as well. Pat Spillane got points and freeze, but also contributed to a couple of very nice moves. Yeah, he's been Dublin's best forward in the championship and he's Dublin's best forward here. This was the, the, probably the only time in that first half that they displayed this little bit of cockiness and arrogance that you'd expect out of Dublin players. And it's a nice bout of interpassing. You know, they're laying it, it's unselfish, nice play, and Cos out to Cosgrove, taps it over the bar. Uh, Rarely did they do that in the first half, rarely were they allowed to do that. It's good intelligent play, but you know, I question the switches perhaps Tommy Lyons made at the start of the game. I, I don't think Desi Farrell has the pace for McGinney at centre forward. Shane Ryan is not a forward, is contributing little Sin and Conan. It's again, it's a half forward line underperforming, and we've looked at Alan Brogan. He's been a major disappointment since the Leinster Championship, and he's yet again a major disappointment today, thus far. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for that. It's time for us to take another commercial break. Yeah, just to mention one of the things that has been happening here at Croke Park at half time, and the GA have been supporting the anti-racism campaign, uh, also coming a month ago, involved in that campaign as well, and supported by Joe McDonough, and former president of the GA, and that banner that you saw there at the bottom of the screen has been carried around the pitch during this half time break. We'll be back again in just a moment.
Will somebody yet be the hero? Like David Marsden. Play back in here at McLaren. He's got it! That was two years ago despite that goal. Of course, Terry went on to reach the All-Ireland final and to win it. Terry are there this year again, but can our man be there is the big question. Now, just a reminder about the phone numbers. It's 1557 for the man of the match. And uh, the phone number from Northern Ireland as well, 0906-614-2048. And those phone lines are open until 8 o'clock tonight. Team's not back out in the field just yet. And Colin Moore to Pat Spada, we've been speculating here as to when the replay is going to be. <laughs> Probably yeah. next Saturday, actually. Yes, it'll probably be next Saturday. It's a bit premature for that. <laughs> I think Dublin need to get Kieran Whelan, or Kieran Whelan needs to get into this game. It's up to him. It's not up to anybody else. Yeah. And I think Dublin should take Brogan out, out from corner forward because then the McNulty has him tied up there. Bring him out maybe even to centre half forward to try and get him a bit of space. And I also would think that it may be a day to bring in the likes of Colin Moore and Paul Kern and J.O. Yeah. I think Dublin have more in reserve than Armagh, but at half-time, Armagh would be happier because they are playing the better football. They are, but having said all that and looking, looking at, at the Dublin team, you mentioned Alan Brogan. We saw very little of him, Patsville, and of course now Shane Wine hasn't really made a, a big impact on the game. So looking around the field, a lot of the Dublin players have been a bit anonymous in the first half. They have indeed. I mean, I suppose take the entire 35 minutes of the first half and you'd have to say that Armagh were the most impressive. Uh, Dublin started well the first 10 minutes, but basically for the next 25 minutes Armagh have dominated. They've dominated that middle third of the field where McGrain and Toll are on top. John McEntee is playing very well coming out the middle as well. And they play a four-man foot forward line, a four-man forward line and two inside, and they're spraying the ball intelligently in to Clark or to MacDonald or to McConville or Marsden sometimes. They'll regret a lot of missed chances, but what... Ama are in the sort of game they want to be in. It's yeah. tight, it's close, it's physical. It's the sort of game they can win. For Dublin to win, and they will have to open it up. They will have to win the middle of the field, but they'll have to open it up and get good quality ball into space, like Kerry got into the two corner forwards last week. Dublin are not getting that good quality ball in. And it's, that's partly due to the pressure being put on by Ama, mm. but it's also partly due, as Colin pointed out earlier on, to very, very bad delivery into that full foul line. So certainly Ama will be the happier, even though they missed a lot more chances, but they will be the happier out of that first half. And like you said, it is shaping very much to be a draw. It's very close, it's very tight. The one thing that's marked a lot of Armagh's games in the championship so far this summer, Colin Rourke, is from positions of strength, they have faded in the second half and given themselves a lot of difficulty in some of the matches, even the two games against Sligo, where they were in command of the game. The worst thing for Armagh is to be four or five points up with ten minutes to go yeah. because they seem to get the jitters at that stage. So it'll be interesting to see and it'll be good from Armagh's point of view because if they could win a game where they have to come from behind in the last quarter, it would do them an awful lot of good. At the moment, they're in a very, very good position. But when Cosgrove gets the goal for Dublin, you know, any time in the next 10 or 15 minutes, he probably will be enough to point them on the way to victory. Just looking at the uh, team coming out there, uh, I think Colin, Colin Moran might be on the team uh, for the second half. We'll confirm that for you in a moment. If he is past the line, what's the likely change, do you reckon? Well, you could take any, you could take Daisy off, you could take Shane Ryan, it's probably Shane Ryan and bring Colin Morton into it. Colin Morton is a very, very capable wing forward, and I mean, he was tremendous against me in the semi-final. He is actually on instead of Shane Ryan. Oh, well, that's why we're here, we're, we're usually <laughs> sharp and that sort of thing, occasionally. <laughs> Tommy has the television can, on can, down in the dressing room. I can well <laughs> understand why Tommy and Joe have kept the teams in, because both teams have been disappointing. They haven't played up to the level that they're capable of playing. Even both our man up, so certainly both had a lot of hard home truths held up there at half time so certainly that will that will bring you're now bringing in a forward who's capable of scoring three or four points from playing the half forward line yeah Colin Morden of course didn't get a start in this game because of uh, an injury uh, from the last day out but uh, playing poorly <laughs> and also playing poorly I suppose probably yes but uh, looking at the Armad the Armad presumably won't make any changes Colin Morden no I'd say they'll be happy enough with the way things are going they'll be trying to they're getting enough ball around the middle of the field and they're isolating Clark and McDonnell inside as I said before McDonnell a couple of slips and he had goggins on the rack there a few times I'd say they'd be fairly happy Oshin McConville though missed a couple of very easy points scoring chances for them and uh, Mac McDonald uh, missed one as well so like Armagh have had the easier chances to kick points but as far as I'm concerned this is a very poor game in terms of individual skill I think the basic skills of the game yeah, have been poorly performed well we might see a different second half but if there's one factor that could decide maybe things. pace and fitness could I mean certainly Armagh players have a lot of mileage in their clock it's possibly the reason why they collapsed in the last few minutes Dublin 
pace, they have youthfulness, they have freshness. They should be capable of finishing this job. And it will certainly have a bearing on a day like today. It's hot, it's overpowering day. So perhaps maybe, look, maybe we're clutching at straws, but certainly that is a factor that could be in Dublin's favour at the end, uh, closing in towards the end of the second half. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for that. So let's be seen then around Croke Park, a full house here for this All Ireland semi final. Who will be playing Kerry in the All Ireland final? Well, we certainly don't know after that first 35 minutes. Let's go back again to Martin and to Martin. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. No doubt about it that Dublin are one of the biggest draws in the business. 79,386, the official attendance here in Coke Park. Second half on. Just one change, as Michael was informing you. Colin Moore on for Shane Rye. Dublin playing in towards Hill 16, going for an early score. And that is gone to the left and wide. Alan Brogan, the guilty party. Denny Tierney facing the sunshine now in this second period. Loose ball again. Francie Bellew under pressure from Darren McGee. Fouled by the Kilmacud Crooks man. Heather Andrews. Colliding with Aidan O'Rourke. Another sideline ball for Armagh. John Toll and Aidan O'Rourke combining. Darren McGee challenging with Kieran Whaler. Much to the annoyance of the Dublin supporters, this is a free for Armagh. Making the run is Stephen McDonald. Outside him is John McEntee. Good ball. Over for his Jim Marsden. Barry Cowell is the Dublin right corner back. Paddy McKeever. Coming over to mark him is Johnny McGee. Still McKeever. Needs the support outside. There available is Paul McGrain. Stephen McDonald, type of ball he usually loves. Stephen Cluxton, good save. And comes off his line so quickly. The young goalkeeper from the Parnell Club here in Dublin. So after that uneasy period, Dublin come forward. This is Colin Moore. Knocked away from Sen and Connell. Again they feed Stephen McDonald. Again he goes for the score. And that is going over the bar. Two of the finest points we've seen in Grove Park in the championship of 2002 has been scored by Stephen McDonald. And for the very first time in this All-Ireland football semi-final, Armagh are in front. This was a fabulous score. He did it in the first half. He's done it in the second. Yes, and he's been a persistent irritant to the Dublin defence from the beginning of the game. A wonderful score from a very difficult angle. Fine catch, losing possession, Darren McGee, comes instead to John Toll, Stephen McDonnell accelerates, back outside for Zoshi McConville, floating this one in, again Cluxton, sound, and that is not a good pass to Johnny McGee but he gets away with it, and it's the centre half back that comes forward. Ray Cosgrove, oh lovely, beautiful to watch, going through, Sen and Connell, and he sends it over the bar. It's his second point in this semi-final, he started the first half with a point and he started the second. This was a great run by O'Connell, but certainly the score was created by Ray Cosgrove. They're two wonderful appetizers for the second half. That score by McDonald, followed by that one there. Superb score from Connell. Sides level yet again for the fourth time, in fact. Fine catch. 
Paul McGray. The players are on centre field, concentrating now on catching the ball. Stephen McDonald lays it off for Ronan Clark. And Cluxton under pressure from Dermot Marsden. And the goalkeeper didn't like the challenge by the corner forward. But the referee had blown his whistle and he's giving a free to the goalkeeper. Also, over the last couple of uh, games that I've seen him, I'm very impressed with Stephen Cluxton. He's very assured under the ball, but a wonderful distributor, I must say. Armagh playing with a lot more fire in their bellies now at the start of this second half. Paul McGray again using Stephen McDonald. Has players available behind and in front of him. Goes for John Toe. There's a chance here for Armagh. Chance for Paddy McKeever. The referee has blown his whistle and I think he's giving the free. I've given the goal. Paddy McKeever. A man who hasn't scored, as I mentioned in the first half, since the Ulster semi-final until he scored a free in the first half. But he left onto the breaking ball here, stepped aside the challenge and managed somehow to scramble it into the net. Just about got the touch on to it that time. Great flick down, just about touching over the line. His momentum seemed to carry him right into the end line and just got the slightest bit of touches. Some Dublin people might uh, protest at a number of steps. But Alan Broga, can Dublin respond? Look at Kieran Whelan, chance of a goal. Oh, what a shot! Here comes Dublin again. Up first, John McNally. Picked up, however. Kieran McGinney comes away with it. Sending it straight down the middle. Should be Paul Casey. Oshin McConville did well, despite being outnumbered. Willing to carry. Willing to pass it to Paddy McKeever. With it is Pato Andrews. Playing it along the touchline. Stephen McDonald makes the run from right corner forward into a left corner forward position Dermot Marsden did so well to keep it in play now comes the cross over this side is Aidan O'Rourke Colin Moore. how 
holding, according to the referee. And this is going to be a free for Armand, for a foul on Aiden O'Rourke. So Darren Holman is going to be introduced for Dublin. And Kieran Hughes is coming on for Andrew McCann at left half back. So Kieran Hughes goes in at left half back from the Pierce Old Club in Armagh City. And Darren Holman is on for Darren McGee. Paddy McKeever not really getting behind this one to his satisfaction. Still could work out. Great block down by Johnny McGee. Break favors Ronan Clark. Armagh hold possession. John McIntyre floats this to the right and wide. And certainly that's a breathtaking start to the second half. There's more, been more football of quality played in that 10 minutes than was played in all of the first half. And credit to both sides for the change of attitude. Stephen Cluxton. Kick out. There's confirmation of the Armagh substitution. Kieran Hughes on it. Left half back for Andrew McCann. And we'll give you the other one in just a moment. As Armagh go into the attack. This is Kieran McGinney. Desi Farrell chasing him as her normal. Coming through the centre, Paul McGray. Good defending Dublin. And they come away with it. In the shape and form of Coleman Goggins. Sending Connell. Changing wings. Giving it first Alan Brogan. Who's moving out around the 45. Still Brogan. Good balance. Good composure. And then takes off. Accelerates. Four Armagh players behind the ball. Uses Sending Connell. Gives it in. There's a chance here for Colin Moran. And that's over the bar. Well, for Colin Moran, this point will be a welcome one. He puts Dublin in front, hasn't scored against Kildare, or indeed the draw, the replay against Donegal. So this was a vital score for his confidence, and indeed a crucial one for his county. Yeah, but a very bit of mature play from a young man, Alan Brogan, setting it up. Johnny McGee uses Kieran Whelan. Scored four points in the quarter-final replay against Donegal, but what about that goal? He scored from this angle against Donegal, and he's done it again against Armagh. Anybody who doubted Kieran Whelan's ability as a footballer for the big occasion has certainly got the answer here. Great goal, great points. Yes, there seemed to be more of a shared responsibility right through the field this time in the second half. There was been left to one or two in the first half, but this time all of the Dublin team, as well as all of the Armagh team, are responding very well. It would appear that Benny Tierney, in his effort to stop that ball from going over the bar, seemed to stretch himself a little bit too much. And he was suffering just for a moment there, but confirmed that he's able to continue. Breaking ball picked up by Aidan O'Rourke. Nice interplay between Roland Clark and Paddy McKeever. Chance for McKeever. The white flag will be raised. This is a man that was dropped for the Sligo replay. He really was obviously focused for this match. He wanted to prove a point, And he's now scored a goal and two points in this semi-final. Again, beautiful score off his left foot. Stole the dummy to Pather Andrews and slotted it over the bar. Great response once again from our man. One point between the teams. Here in Wheeler. And could well be in trouble here with the referee. Didn't like the challenge and uh, Michael Collins had blown his whistle and he's noting the name of Kieran Whelan and a yellow card I'm pretty sure is going to be shown here second yellow card for Dublin the other player being John McNally Kieran Whelan getting a yellow it means now that Dublin have amassed 14 yellow cards in the championship campaign so far interestingly Armagh have 21 yellow cards good ball in for Stephen McDonald. had the time had the space 
but he's been very disappointed when you consider what he's already scored that was easy oh very much so marty that was very wasteful he had dropped uh, coleman goggins completely broke away from them had all the room probably too much time to get the score and missed it badly Darren McGee obviously picked up a nigh injury and that's the reason why he was substituted. We hope that Darren will have a speedy recovery. He seemed to pick up that injury, if you recall, in the first half, but obviously they felt he couldn't continue on. Some pushing and Armagh go back into the attack. I must say, Marty, I'm very impressed with the midfield pairing of Armagh, both Tola McGrain. They're probing away consistently, winning a lot of ball and actually distributing better quality ball into their forward line than Dublin might be. Kieran McGinney. Again, McDonald makes the run from one corner to the other. Oshin McConver. Look at this. This is a chance for Armagh. Surely. It's sent over the bar. A point for John McEntee. But that needed a cool head and a little bit more composure. That and was a goal-scoring opportunity. And a little bit of peripheral vision, Marty. That time Ronan Clark was wide open. Great pass in, McEntee making the rope. But if he just looked up, directly a square to him was Ronan Clark. The goal was on. Armagh beginning to dominate around midfield, despite that wonderful surge by Dublin and response. John McEntee. Going for a point, dropping it in. Stephen Cluxton. Watching it all the way. Here's Paddy Christie. Has to go back to his keeper. Barry Cow and Coleman Goggins waiting for possession. Paul Casey, right half back. Switching over to the left half back position. Senan Cano. Tommy Lyon seems to fall into uh, trouble here as well. Quick <laughs> with Kieran Hughes. And I think that Kieran Hughes is going to be spoken to and possibly booked by the referee yes he is yellow card for Kieran Hughes who came on for Andrew McCann two yellows for Dublin one yellow for Armagh The poor kick gave Desi Farr no chance whatsoever. Sideline ball Armagh. Yeah, but to be fair to Kieran Whelan also, the runs weren't being made by the forward line that time to give him an option. These two teams level seven times in this All-Ireland semi-final. At the moment, you would have to say Armagh, in terms of possession, dominate. John McEntee wins the ball back thanks to the hard work of Dermot Marsden Ronan Clark nice skill good composure uses Paul McGray Aidan O'Rourke has a lash but it's gone wide the ninth wide of the game for Armagh yes the build up might have been a bit laboured that time Marty but McEntee doing very very well Just watch this again. Kieran Hughes coming in and Tommy Lines taking a tumble and sportingly picking up the Armagh player. Stephen Cluxton with the kick out. Pader Andrews gets by Paddy McKeever. But great pressure by Armagh. Oshin McConville, referee giving him the free, and he had to take a lot of pressure to win it. Gives the ball in quick, it's two against two. Stephen McDonald tries to knock it down for Marsden. Paddy Christie is back there. And he is followed by Dermot Marsden, free to Paddy and to Dublin. But Dublin have to start again. Terrible distribution, they seem to have lost their shape and their concentration at the moment. Despite that brilliant goal by Kieran Whelan, it should have been a signal for Dublin to dominate. It's been the trigger for Armagh to dominate, surprisingly. John McEntee loses out to Johnny McGee, making himself available as Colin Moore. Flicking it inside for Alan Brogan, challenging Colin Moore after he gave the ball inside for Nathan O'Rourke. Meanwhile, it's Alan Brogan. 
trying it from a difficult angle and sending it over the bar. No doubt about it, Alan Brogan, a star of the future, has really matured since he made his debut for Dublin against Wexford on June the 1st. Puts Dublin in front as Aidan O'Rourke has received a yellow card. So it's uh, two all in terms of yellow cards for these counties. Yes, that was a wonderful individual score by Alan Brogan. Very little on, came on to his left foot and again shot it over the bar. Certainly he's proved greatly in the second half. A little bit of pushing there by Darren Holman, spotted by the referee. No doubt here that the referee is perfectly correct. Here McGinney survives the challenge of John McNally, pumping it in long, perhaps too long. Paddy Christie, wisely, laying it uh, up over the end, leaving it up over the end line and wide. And Keisha Bertie Hearn with his daughter Georgina, as Jason Sherlock warms up. Perhaps his introduction will invigorate this Dublin attack. Desi Farrell noticeably as I look at that Dublin attack now at full forward. Fine catch by Kieran Wheeler. Making the run at the far side is Senan Connell. Uses instead Ray Cosgrove. And Armagh have it once more. John McEntee. Flying a crossfield ball. Didn't work out at all. Paul Casey intercepts. Johnny McGee. Stephen McDonald. Claire that's providing the pressure. This is Darren Homer. Good pressure again. Only this time from John Toll. Leaving it in long. Goes by. Here McGinney with good covering again. Justin McNulty. Needs the support of his goalkeeper Benny Tierney. Under pressure from Colin Moore. McNulty again. Great pressure this time from Desi Farr. Aidan O'Rourke now has possession. And eventually O'Rourke wins the free. Right down the sideline. Ball got out over the line, Andy McNulty. The referee claims that it is in fact a free to Armagh. And Dublin and Tommy Lyons incensed with the decision. And a yellow card, I would imagine, for Father Andrews. Yeah, I thought a little bit harsh to give him a yellow card that time. I think Tommy Lyons thought it should have been a line ball for uh, Dublin. I'd be inclined to agree with that. Sideline ball Armagh. As Tommy Lyons tries to help out his defence on the sideline, encouraging. And Oshin Makonbo. Coming through the centre. There's a chance here. Left half back. Here in Hughes. And a great block down. Good defending Dublin. Out fires Alan Broga. Dublin now. Can they counter attack? Roy Cosgrove makes the run, holds possession, uses Desi Farrell instead, beats Francie Bellion and Justin McNulty, still Farrell, orchestrating affairs from full forward, Colin Moore, crossfield ball now required, here it is, overfires Roy Cosgrove, Cosgrove sends it over the bar, five points for Ray Cosgrove, Three from play, two from freeze, and Dublin lead by two points. Good ball over here first, Ray Cosgrove, and he is so dangerous every time he touches the ball. Yes, and credit the Dublin attack so patient that time too, Marty, and waiting for the opportunity to arrive, and again a glorious finish by Cosgrove. Benny Tierney again, just picks out that ball down the middle. John Toll makes himself available. These two players, Toll and McGrain, doing very well at centre field for Armagh. Good catch by Ronan Clark, under pressure. Gives it to Stephen McDonald, Hatter Andrews. And that's going to be a free end. Yeah, just like to make a common mark on the strategy that Armagh are using at the moment. When they get the ball on the right wing, they pump it high all the way across the field to the opposite side in the hope of isolating a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's working very well. So Philip Lockwood from Clady 
Played centre field for University Ulster at Jordanstown. Still in our uh, under-21 star. Has been in fact for the last two years. And he replaced John McEntee in the Sligo replay after 64 minutes. He comes in now for John Toe. Ashin McConvo with the free and the point. Four from four. Quite an impressive statistic for Ashin McConvo. Dublin lead by just one point. Twenty-year-old Stephen Cluxton with the kick out. Breaking ball picked up again by Dublin and by Johnny McGee chasing after him Paul McGrain. Good running through the centre. Good defending by Kieran McGeeney. Tries to knock it back, and Benny Tierney will leave it out over the end line. Good decision by Benny Tierney to lose Philip Lockwood. Going to be a throw ball here. Between Darren Holman, I would imagine, and John McEntee. There were the players involved in that particular sequence. Paul McGrain, number nine. Pushing on Darren Holman's back. Free to Dublin. Giving it long. It's two against two here. Look for it. Cosgrove has sneaked in. Chance of a point. Oh, beautiful. The top forward in the championship, not just today, but right throughout since the championship campaign began from Dublin last May, below a Dr. Cullen Park, Ray Cosgrove has been lethal. A lovely bit of opportunism and anticipation that time, waiting for the ball to bounce over it by his head, and again scored a beauty. John McNally is the player that's making way, and Jason Sherlock is introduced. Being introduced in every game so far. Scored two points against Wexford, but has failed to score since. But Jason Sherlock adds another dimension to this Dublin attack. Not just a finisher now, but a creator. Kieran Hughes sending that ball over far as Kieran Marsden. Sideline ball, Dublin. Yes, indeed, there's a nippishness about Jason Sherlock and it, 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 the way he can run around and drag defenders all over the place. Alan Brogan now playing at in the half forward line. Dublin playing with Ray Cosgrove and Desi Powell in the two man full forward line. Stephen McDonald. As always, keeping him company is Coleman Goggins. Aidan O'Rourke back outside. Good defending. Great block down. The coast is rolling Clark. Will he score? It's going and it's over the bar. You'd never think he was just 19 years of age. Played for the Armagh Miners last year. And Joe Kernan, again, while the Armagh crowd are celebrating, making another switch. But uh, certainly 19-year-old Roland Clark, hero in the replay against Sligo, does the business here. Good score. Well taken. It's a great credit to them. Uh, they're stubborn, they're unflinching, and they're applying concentrated aggression onto the Dublin defence at the moment. But it must be said that both sets of players, other on the middle, are beginning to tire a little bit, Marty. And this is the point that some people make about Armagh, that they seem to tire in the last 10 or 15 minutes. This is going to test them. It's going to test them, but it's in contrast to other games they're scoring in the last quarter. Breaking ball. Once again, comes to Darren Homer. Wanting to prove a point to his manager. Here he goes, it's a poor shot. And Benny Tierney has all the time in the world to gather that one. Down for his Aidan O'Rourke. Needs the support from Kieran McGinney. It's there, as always. And McGinney involved with Jason Sherlock. They're club mates. Back down for his Paul McGrain. Good ball for Stephen McDonald. Roland Clark is inside. And outside is John McEntee. Can he float this one over? The answer 
is a most definite yes. Three points for John McEntee. Eight times Armand Dublin are level. Came into this match scoring two goals and five points in six games. Three points in this match. He could have a few more, but I don't think any of his critics would say anything about it because he has always responded when our man needed it. He's been wonderful today, both as a creator and as a scorer in death case. To my mind, to my mind, the man of the match. Darren Homer laying it outside. Here's Alan Brogan in space. Can he put this one over? He can't. Five minutes left in Croke Park. Will we have an answer about who will play Kerry on the 22nd of September? Well, certainly I wouldn't like to be putting money on it, Marty. Very finely balanced. Eight times they've been level. Is it possible that this will go to a replay? Kieran McGuinney laying it outside. Philip Lockwood. Back to Kieran McGuinney. Several options. None of them in the full forward line at the moment. They're all over on the half forward line. This is Oshin McConville. Confronted by Paul Casey. McConville, great run. Uses the fist and sends it over the bar. His first from play. to be played. Can you bear to watch? 
Is this the end of Tommy Lines' babes? Can they get an equaliser? They have a free, quickly taken, but given away by Jason Sherlock. End of McNulty. Giving it long, down fire Stephen McDonald, chased by Coleman Goggins. Stephen, with possession, quite happy to hold it until somebody arrives. John McEntee, back to McDonald. Hitting this very high, hitting this to the left and wide. 11 wide to Armagh. 69 minutes, 55 seconds. Just two minutes left. Is it Armagh against Kerry on the 22nd of September? Darren Holman fouled, free to Dublin. Referee won't allow the free to be taken quickly. Not taken from the right position, and it's going to be Darren Holman. Armagh introducing substitutes, which will, of course, delay proceedings. And so are Dublin. Declan Darcy coming in for Dublin and Cahal O'Rourke coming on for Armagh. Declan Darcy, I believe, is coming on for Colin Moore. Changes in both caps. Referee again wants the substitution to take place and will not allow the free to be taken quickly. Paddy McKeever is going to make way for Carl O'Rourke. And certainly McKeever has done the business this afternoon for Amal. Carl O'Rourke, the experienced O'Rourke, coming on. Kieran Wheeler. Giving it long. Kieran McGinney anticipates and reads the situation well. Is the dream final about to be interrupted by the men from Armagh, led by this man, Joe Kernan, who brought his club to this venue and won three All-Ireland Club titles? It, it certainly looks like it, Marty, at the moment. Aidan O'Rourke to Kieran McGinney. 20 seconds left. Jason Sherlock making way. Ray Cosgrove. Can he get room to shoot? Everybody standing on their feet. Cosgrove is fouled by Ender McNulty and this is a free for Dublin. That's a really brave piece of play by Cosgrove, demanded the ball, got it, held on to it and drew the foul. But can he score from this free? The most important kick of the whole championship. He scored six points. The Cab watch. We have to. All of Dublin has to. Does this go to a replay? Hill 16 he faces. It's floating to the right. Will it curl off the post? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Fancy Bellio comes away. Armagh have to hold possession. It's all over. What a dramatic finish. Armagh having lost to me than to Kerry have finally done it. They have finally won a match in Croke Park. They are in the All-Ireland Final in today three weeks against the men of Kerry. Tommy Lyons congratulates Joe Kern. And Joe Kernan cannot believe that today is finally their day. Paddy McKeever, a goal at two points, dropped for the quarter-final replay against Sligo, comes on and scores a goal at two points. For Stephen Cruxton, there is the joy of winning a Leinster Under-21 and Senior Championship medal, but heartbreak because he will not be playing in this year's All-Ireland Football Final. They have brought hundreds of thousands to Crow Park. The Dublin supporters and players have brought a magical spell to Gaelic Games. But today, we have to congratulate the men from the Orchard County. It's not been a good year for Apples, but for the Orchard County, it's a place in the All-Ireland Final. Absolutely, Marty. What a display by our man in the second half. They never accepted being second best. They continue to take the game to Dublin, even when things seem to be going against them. And they had that little bit more poise, took the correct options at the right time, and had the tactic of getting the ball high into the Dublin full back line, which created a lot of trouble. Great victory. Full-time score in Cork Park. Armagh 114, Dublin 113. What a finish. What drama. Let's go down for some uh, post-match reaction and join Joe. Joe, the atmosphere here, incredible. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means the world to this team. They were out of 
criticised, no good, hadn't got the bottle. I think they played a lot of answers today. But all we've done is won a semi-final. You know, we'll enjoy the night and I look forward to the final now. It's such a long time since you won one here. Certainly, I had a jersey in the dressing room today that uh, 25 years old today at all Ireland, so uh, they're all of jersey for an all Ireland final now. Incredible spirit you showed right throughout the second half. Well, it's something we haven't got, as everybody can say, and we've no character and all those things. No, the boys believed they could do it, and if, if from start to finish, they just would not give in. They deserve this. How much did that criticism hurt you and the players? Well, it hurt certainly when, when we knew it wasn't true. You know, I think a lot of people are going to go looking for new jobs in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> well done, enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Tara. Great excitement around Crow Park. Our Ma people finally have a chance to rejoice in Crow Park. But what a finish, Martin Carney. If you wrote a script, could you get it better? No, and I'd hate Dublin supporters go, going away out of the ground to blame Ray Cosgrove. To oh, my mind, not. he was outstanding throughout. He was the one threat that Dublin had consistently over the 70 minutes. And OK, the responsibility fell on his shoulders. And unluckily, it hit the post. But it must be said, throughout the field, our Ma were the better team today. Won the ball around that midfield guy used it a lot better and then the likes of John McEntee and Steve McDonald had two boys that persistently caused a threat to Dublin defence well, let's go down for some more post-match reaction and join uh, Darren oh Shane that was something else to watch what was it like to play in? Oh, it was unbelievable it was hard stopping you know, I found that wasn't in the game myself but uh, I knew if I got one chance to be able to put it over the bar but fair play that boys we battled and we battled and even when we were two or three points down and the hill Everton was against us you know we we we, we got there in the end, you know, we've been, I think we deserve the wee slice of luck, we've been here three, three or four years in a row and, you know, we're so close and now it's, this is a different class for us, I mean, you know, I know we have carried a bit now, but it's, it's brilliant to get to an, an all Ireland final for us. But. What was the difference today in that last quarter, people had criticised you on your past performances in the final quarter where you faded, you didn't today? No, well we knew if we were in there and it was going to be a fight that we'd win the fight because we've been here so many times before, we've had close games all year, we knew that would stand to us. Okay, we haven't been outstanding. We haven't been outstanding today. Hopefully we'll save enough for the final. You got the benefit of the goal early in the second half and Dublin hit you straight back and that looked like a key score. Yeah, it did. You know, it was unbelievable, you know, to get for them to get a to get them to get a score straight away, you know. But uh it was it knocked us back in our heads. I think they got a couple of points after that. But we always knew if we get down the field that Stevie would knock them over the bar and that's the way it happened. As a, another free taker did you feel for Ray at the end he had I a chance? Him, I said to him after you know we're gonna help in anybody and you know he fair play to me he had the gumption to go up and hit it you know not everybody would go up and hit that people sh shared the responsibility but I mean fair play to him for hitting it and he was unlucky I mean a post that's the save that's the save us. Now in All-Ireland final to look forward to it. Yeah Kerry were awesome the last day and, you know we're gonna have to walk very very hard you know to beat them but I mean we're there and we're there to be beat so we'll take our chance and see what happens. Shane, thank you very much. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much, uh, Dara. Well, we're still breathtaking uh, scenes here. It's just unbelievable. Armagh have come here so many times and bitterly disappointed. They lost to Meath in 1999 and Kerry 2000. And fair play to the Dublin supporters in Hill 16. They're absolutely dumbfounded. But to their credit, they have stayed here, save at the moment. But for these Armagh people, today is a joy, a day they will never forget wonderful scenes, emotional scenes for our Ma people. And when you think of Ray Cosgrove, they scored six goals in the last four games, but in all, he scored six goals and 23 points in six games. It's just a wonderful performance by Ray Cosgrove, and he's desperately, desperately unlucky not to have scored the equaliser. But let's go back down uh, to Dara Maloney for some more post-match reaction. Kieran McGinney, uh, a very special day in our Ma history. Well, I wouldn't have found it that special. Like, we won a game and everybody said we couldn't win here, so maybe it's special in that regard, but as yet we still haven't got anything, like, you know. But it is a big achievement for you to win the semi-final. As underdogs, Dublin were massive favourites. Yeah, well, everybody always makes people play against us favourites, like, you know, we won three out of four other championships and we still can't play well, so, you know, we just go out and play our football and let the, the critics say what they want. They usually do anyway. It was quite a game though, you were levelled countless times. Second half, it could have gone either way. Yeah, it was a brilliant team, Dublin, and you always know you're in a game. Like, they hit hard, but they hit fair. Like, and we knew we were going in for a big battle today, and we got a goal. And probably was the best thing that ever happened to us, that Dublin came back and hit another one. But sometimes we just tend to sit on it, like, you know what I mean? We had to go at them again. And, like, you know, you have to give credit to Morrison, 
you know, Steve McDonald, those sorts of guys, like they never quit in us, like, when the ball won in, it wasn't always good, but they fought for it, like, and they won it back, you know, and uh, even when a few decisions went against us, like, they still kept that one away, like, and we got it, thank God, like, that free kick went wide at the end, like, it was a mistake by myself, but I was happy enough, like, we'd, we'd done our business. What was the message from Joe at half time? It was six all. But Joe, like, is, uh, just tells us to go out and, like, enjoy ourselves and play a bit of football, like, you know, I suppose like, there's enough people out there criticising us, you know, and Joe keeps us going, like keeps our heads up and not there, so you know, we kept told us to go out and do our best and I, mean, I don't think we played that particularly well, but we won and that's what counts. What was it like for you marking your great friend and your clubmate Desi Farrell? I think he's a handful, like I'm glad he hadn't two legs, like because he's bad enough with one, like you know, and I know today Desi was sold going into the game, but it's a measure of the man like that he goes out and plays and gives us all. And you know people criticise him for everything else. In the football, but like he's a, he's a massive man, like and a, a very good friend, and you know, like I know it's no consolation to him, but he's been there and done that, and like, you know, I still have yet to do it. Well, you're going to enjoy it. Thanks, Kieran. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you very much indeed, Darren. Kieran McGinney and Darma showed their character responding to Kieran Whelan's brilliant goal, and certainly here in Crow Park, scenes of jubilation all around the grounds. I don't think the Armagh people will go home until about Wednesday or Thursday and they can look forward to a match against Kerry. The game indeed when they last went, uh, went to a replay an extra time before Kerry went on to win it. So we're going to have a great day here today, three weeks. Armagh supporters on Hill 16 rejoice. And isn't that the beauty of the GA? Dublin, Hill 16, mixing with the Armagh supporters on six, Hill 16, congratulating each other.